So I was watching some TV and I was thinking uh, about maybe after watching a Christmas movie, starting this series with the first Christmas movie of the year, except for Arthur Christmas, with, which I kind of cheated with before because I watched it um, early, a little bit earlier. But except for that one and for this series, this will be the first movie. Um, anyway, and I just I felt I just was, was thinking about which one I could watch, and I was like, pretty much immediately, Gremlins. Uh, I don't know why. It was just, um, I don't know, I kind of feel like I want to save the most Christmassy movies uh, for later on. And this one is not one of the most Christmassy movies, so it's like a, a light start, I guess. But anyway, so um, I'm going to watch Gremlins. Um, I've seen it a couple times before, but it's it's a great movie. I don't know if I view it as a Christmas movie, per se, but like I said, it's, yeah, like I said, it's... it's uh, it's a, it's, a, it's a good one to start with, uh, especially after October, which I, I didn't watch any horror movies in October except for um, uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, uh, but that doesn't really matter. But um, yes, but but this is what the one that I'm going to start with, Gremlins. Um, so we're just gonna just gonna you know press play right here, put on the headphones. Oh right, and eat some chocolate maybe. <laughs> this is actually um Okay, let's pause real quick. This is actually oh look what a big box and it's all empty. Whoops. Well Christmas chocolates. And I'll show you the uh <laughs> the ingredients here. Milk chocolates with spicy truffle filling. Cardamom, clove, cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg. Pretty, pretty interesting. I guess I can throw this away. Um, you know, so I'll, I'll, I'll enjoy these Christmas, this, this Christmassy flavor of chocolate, and, 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 and enjoy this somewhat Christmassy movie, uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about it afterwards. Okay, November third. Let's start this thing. That was kind of corny. You know when you think about something. And then immediately afterwards, you you hear that in a movie or in in whatever. Now I'm only a few minutes into the movie. He's in the shop here, and he's gonna sell his little convenient thing there with with all of these uh, things on it. it the, if you've seen the movie, you know what's going on. But I, for some reason, something reminded me of planes, trains, and automobiles. That movie, um, and. Uh, I, I I don't know why I, it was just uh, I was I was thinking about Christmas movies you know and I was thinking about that one as one that I had forgotten about and uh, I was thinking well maybe I should watch that one also because it's been a while uh, it's not really a Christmas movie but it kind of ends with with the holiday spirit so it's a good one to watch on the holidays and immediately after I I thought about that movie he says the word what is it he says let's just rewind here. You got yourself a dental mirror. This is going to revolutionize traveling. Now, let's just say for the sake of argument that you're on a bus or a plane or a train. Well, bus, plane or train. Not planes, trains and automobiles. But a bus is an automobile. Anyway, that that is... Um, it's almost like when I was watching Ghostbusters for the first... Well, it's not really the same thing, but I was watching the Ghostbusters and I turned on the lights after the movie and the light went out. But anyway, <laughs> not really the same thing. But still, this was... Okay, well, kind of kind of fun coincidence. Okay, well, anyway, let, let's just... Let's just keep watching. Why did I do that? Well, I guess to to demonstrate that sugar was consumed. Um, so here I'm lying with my, with my laptop in bed. It's pretty late, as you can see. Um, but let's talk about Gremlins a little bit. Um, so 
it doesn't feel... I think I bought this in 2012, this steelbook, and I can't imagine it being three years since I saw this, because it feels like I saw it very recently. I don't know. Um, maybe I saw it last year or two years ago. Or, well, the lighting is not going to be great here, but who cares. So, <laughs> this is... Um, it is, I mean, it doesn't center around Christmas, but Christmas, the whole thing takes place during Christmas, and the whole movie is like illuminated by um, colorful Christmas lights that gives it, gives it this certain feeling, and I don't think that that was, in, um, you know, I think that that was very much intentional, you know, I don't think it just, the movie just happened to, to get to, you know, to yeah to get this look uh from just randomly placing out these these lights on the set i think that was a very strategic move to make the movie look this way and it, it's effective and um it is uh <laughs> it's not your typical christmas movie because obviously well it doesn't revolve around family and christmas celebration and uh preparation and all of that stuff but um it's still a pretty cozy movie because because of the the lights, like I said, uh, and because it, it has good characters. Definitely has a lot of heart, even though it has a lot of well, some scenes which borders on rated R. Well, well, kind of. I mean, in, in that that kitchen scene, for example, where the guy's mom is in the kitchen with, and he she finds a gremlin in there. And she kind of it kind of it leans over it leans into this bowl with a rotating rotating blade or something in inside of it and she turns it on and it just spins around and just blood splatters all over the place although the blood is green I'm guessing if well I wouldn't be that surprised if say that the blood was red uh, I wouldn't be that surprised if the movie would have gotten a rated uh, or well uh, an R because of that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but since the blood is green, it's a PG-13. But it, anyway, it's a pretty graphic scene. And then she also um, puts a gremlin inside of the microwave and, p and turns it on and it explodes, which is pretty graphic and disgusting too. So it pushes the, um, the limits of what people expect from a Christmas movie. But like I said, it's not really a Christmas movie. But... Um, at the same time, it has this adorable feeling to it because of Gizmo. He's, I mean, all of the gremlins are, of course, um, transformed into these hideous, monstrous looking creatures, uh, except for one. <laughs> and he is kind of his, his Gizmo, he's, he's one of the main characters, of course, in the movie. And I think if it wasn't for Gizmo, the movie would have a very different feeling. Um, it would be a lot darker just, I mean, not um, removing anything, not necessarily removing any of the um, the dark features of the movie, but removing the adorable thing of the movie, then it would be a lot darker. Maybe that was obvious. It sounded better in my head. Anyway, let's, let's move on. So, um, what else was I going to say? Well, it, it's just a very great movie. The, the the first half in particular is very cozy when, when the dad gets home to the house and he, he brings the gremlin and, you know, the, the scenes up at um, the guy's room in the, in the attic or whatever, uh, just checking the time. Um, and then uh, just... I'm, I'm, I keep coming back to the lights, man. I think the lights are, are great. Um, but it, it's more than that. I mean, in the ending, it becomes, or the, the last, maybe the, the last third act, or well, the, the, the third act, it becomes just mayhem and just very ambitious in terms of practical effects. I mean, it has feels like there are hundreds of gremlins running about. I mean, for example, with the the the, the movie theater scene, uh, maybe there were some superimposition or something going on there. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, very ambitious with all of these gremlins, uh, mostly, you know, almost pretty much uh, exclusively made with, with practical effects and um, and everything just taking place in this very idyllic little town. I guess there's supposed to be that contrast between that uh, 
idyllic town and the mayhem that uh, goes on in the ending. Um, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Um, and there's also some really fun. Uh, d there, there are things that you might not. They're, they're not. They're not completely hidden, but things that you might not notice at, at at first viewing or you know if you haven't seen for example there are references to other movies uh, there are ref references to E.T. I think at least one maybe two anyway uh, which most most people will get them but one thing that I, I I don't think I could have gotten last time because I hadn't seen the movie although I might have recognized the robot because it's pretty pretty recognizable but Robbie the robot from Forbidden Planet which I saw recently makes an appearance here because you know the dad is some sort of inventor although he sucks really sucks and he's he has invented this bathroom buddy which was the thing that he had in the beginning that I couldn't explain <laughs> but um, just uh, useless useless uh, invention he, he calls it the illogical made logical but it's it's the complete opposite it's the logical made illogical all of these logical instruments he's put together and made it just <laughs> very clumsy and just and anyway it doesn't matter but he he sucks at his <laughs> I don't know if that's what he actually does for a living but um, anyway so he he's at this convention or this uh, this contest of of inventors and one of the people has apparently invented Robbie the robot. <laughs> there's a fun reference and I think he even has a couple lines from the actual movie because I recognized one line that is in the movie Forbidden Planet so there are kind of references like that that are not all that obvious to other things and just generally a lot of things going on on the screen that I don't think you can possibly take it all in at the, the first time you see it and even if you can it's the whole thing is so dynamic that uh, it's I dare you to to get I dare you to get bored it sounds like well it sounds weird to um, I dare you to kinda be bored well, that doesn't sound good either I don't think you will be bored the second time you view it if you liked it the first time that is because there's just so many things going on so many levels of entertainment and so yeah I like it um, I was on my laptop now on, on the internet a little bit towards the end, but um, it's it's great stuff. Um, okay, so I think that will have to do for the first part. Um, November third, there will be more to come for sure. Uh, I only covered one movie in this first part, but I don't think it's going to be one movie per part. You know, from from now on, uh, maybe sometimes will. It really depends how much I film, but. Um, that's uh, yeah. That's it for part one. I will see you. No, part two. <laughs> I think I called uh, the 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 one where I showed the Christmas movies part one. So that's it for part two, I guess. Uh, and so I will see you in part three. Got some math skills. I'm not a comedian. But I try.